This is question 5 from paper 1 from the SQA New Hire specimen paper. Given the equation of line L1, we're asked to find the gradient of line L2, which is per perpendicular to that. Now, we're going to use two facts. One is that if a equation of a straight line is in the form y equals mx plus c, then we can immediately read off its gradient. We can also read off its y-intercept. That's one fact. And the other one is that if two lines have gradients, suppose they're m1 and m2, that multiply to give us negative 1, then they're perpendicular to each other, which would mean that if you have a gradient, for instance, a over b, where b is not equal to 0, then it means that a perpendicular line will have gradient b over a negative that. So that's because these two multiply together give you negative 1. But that's the result. You invert the fraction and change the sign. So let's go up and tackle part a here. So the equation is root 3y minus x equals 0. And we're trying to get it into this form so that we can read off the gradient. So let's add x to both sides. So that disappears and an x appears over there. Let's divide both sides by root 3. Now, let's think of a simpler case. If you're dividing x by 2, it's like finding a half of x. If you divide x by 3, it's like finding a third of x, and so on. So if we're dividing x by root 3, it's like multiplying by the fraction 1 over root 3. So dividing x by root 3, we can write that as 1 over root 3 times x. And we do have it in the form y equals mx plus c. We're adding 0, so we know that it crosses the y-axis at 0, 0. Um, but the gradient implies the gradient of L1 is, let's call it M1, and it's 1 over root 3. And that would imply that the perpendicular gradient would be negative root 3 over 1. If we forget about 1, but we've inverted it and changed the sign, as we mentioned over here. So that's the gradient of a perpendicular line. So that is the gradient of L2. So the gradient of L2 is, we can call it M2, is negative 3. And these two multiplied together will give you negative 1. So that's the answer to part A. Let's move on to part B. And this line that has a gradient of negative 3, we're asked what angle it makes with the positive direction of the x-axis. Now, in this case, our result is that if we have some line L that makes an angle of theta, remember the definition of gradient is the distance up or down divided by the distance along. Well, looking at angle theta in this right angle triangle, that would be the tangent. The tangent of theta is equal to the gradient of that line. And that's a result that works for uh, downhill lines too, where that angle would be greater than 90. But remember, the angle here would never be greater than 180. So let's have a look at this. The tan, well, we'd better say what theta is. Let the angle be theta. Then the, we know that the tan of theta is equal to the gradient, which is equal to negative root 3. Now, we immediately know that the gradient must be in the second quadrant, must be between 90 and 180. If you're unsure of that, there's our diagram that tells you it's only the sign that's positive in the set for second quadrant angles. So tangent in second quadrant 
is negative, and therefore we know the angle that's required is between 90 and 180. So the question is, what is the first quadrant angle? And root 3 appears in the diagram of an equilateral triangle chopped in half, where all sides are length 2, so this becomes 1, that's 1, that gives you your 2, and there's 2, and Pythagoras in this triangle would give you root 3 for this remaining side. Now, it therefore means, are we in this angle here, with the tangent being root 3, or are we up here with the tangent being root 3? Well, the tangent is opposite over adjacent, so we're down at this 60 degree angle, root 3 over 1, opposite over adjacent. So 60 degrees in an equilateral triangle, first quadrant angle is 60 degrees. So theta, this is the angle we're after, since it's second quadrant, remember in second quadrant angle we go all the way around to 180 and take away the first quadrant angle. So theta is 180 minus 60 degrees. So that would be 120 degrees. So the angle that L2 makes with a positive direction of the x-axis is 120 degrees.